In Activity 11, Making a Fuse, students are introduced to the circuit fuse and discover the circuit fuse's use and applications in everyday life. Students first make an electric fuse and then overload the fuse's circuit to observe how a fuse works. Finally, students discover the usefulness of fuses in household circuits. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 11, Parts A and B. Activity Sheet 2 from Activity 2. D-cell batteries. Battery holders. Number 41 flashlight bulbs. Number 48 flashlight bulbs. Bulb holders. Electrical clips. Fonstock clips. Modeling clay from Activity 10. 15 centimeter insulated copper wire pieces. A steel wool pad. Insulated copper wire and wire cutters. You will also need to provide metric rulers and an intact fuse and a blown fuse. To prepare for the activity, make a copy of Activity Sheet 11 Parts A and B for each student. Cut and strip the ends of one new 15 centimeter piece of insulated copper wire for each team. Then, carefully separate two strands of steel wool about five to eight centimeters long from the ball of wool for each team of two. Each student will need his or her copy of Activity Sheet 2. Each team of two will need three batteries, three battery holders, six electrical clips, two bulb holders, two number 41 bulbs, two number 48 bulbs, two Fonstock clips, nine pieces of insulated copper wire, a bag of modeling clay, a metric ruler, and two strands of steel wool. To begin the activity, lead a discussion by asking students which items in your home are powered by an electric current? Students may mention kitchen appliances, hair dryers, televisions, and computers. Explain to the class that very high amounts of current can cause wires or other conductors in these appliances to become extremely hot, like the filaments of bulbs. If something were touching the part that becomes hot, it could catch fire. Ask students if a lot of electric current can start a fire. How can you keep those items from getting too much current? Some students may already be familiar with fuses and how fuses work. Ask students, what happens when a household fuse blows? Students should respond that the lights go out. Guide students to realize that if too much of an electric current flows through a circuit, heat will build up in the conductors and can cause the conductors to overheat and melt. If the melted conductor were touching something flammable, it could catch fire. Inform students that a fuse contains a thin wire or other conductor that is designed to break if too much current flows through it. When the wire inside a fuse melts and breaks, the circuit that the fuse is placed in is opened and all electric current stops flowing through the circuit. Then, show students the symbol for a fuse. Distribute each student's copy of Activity Sheet 2 and tell students to copy the symbol for a fuse onto their electrical symbols chart. Draw the circuit diagram of a fuse and a circuit and ask students what have you learned about conductors, resistance, amount of current, and heat that would be useful in making a fuse. Students should understand that conductors that have high resistance to current, such as thin wires, can get very hot and sometimes burn out or melt. Borrow one of the materials to construct a circuit that looks like the one depicted in Figure 11-3. Then ask students, where is the fuse in this circuit? Allow students time to speculate. Do not confirm or deny their guesses at this point. Distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 11 Parts A and B to each student and the materials to each team. Then, instruct teams to build their fuse setups and test them according to the instructions on Activity Sheet 11 Parts A and B. Remind students to record their observations. As they conduct their experiments, make sure students keep their hands away from the steel wool when it begins to burn. Discuss with students their observations and results. Ask students, why did the fuse not blow until number 41 bulbs were placed in the circuit? Students should have observed number 41 bulbs allowed more current to pass than did the number 48 bulbs. In fact, the number 41 bulbs allowed more current to flow than the steel wool strand could handle, and that caused the steel wool to break, or rather, caused the fuse to blow. Then ask, what would happen if you put too many bulbs on one circuit? guide students to realize that this would allow too much current to flow and would blow the fuse. Explain that the fuse is a safety device, because if the fuse did not stop the flow of electric current through the conductors in the circuit, the conductors could overheat and start a fire. Then ask, why don't the melting fuses themselves cause fires? Students may suggest that fuse wires or conductors are housed in special tubes so that they are not touching anything that could start a fire. This is a good time for you to pass around any fuses you may have collected for students to look at. 
Finally, inform students that in the next activity, Electric Puzzles, they will design and decipher electric puzzles. To conclude the activity, have students return all batteries, battery holders, electrical clips, font stock clips, bulbs, bulb holders, bags of modeling clay, wires, and the remaining steel wool to the kit. Discard the burned strands of steel wool. Note that the modeling clay will be used again in the assessment activity. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM Teacher's Guide.